there everyone, what's going on? Joe Mari here from MobileCompetJoe.com. So if you are in the market for a brand new smartphone, you don't care how much money you spend, you just know that you want to get one of the best smartphones that money can buy, then I highly suggest that you continue to watch this video because in this episode of Mobile Cup of Joe, I'm going to be giving you my full video review of the LG Optimus G, which very well could be one of the best Android handsets we've seen to date. So if you want to find out why I think this smartphone is so great and so spectacular, keep watching this here old video review. But guys, before we go any further, please go ahead and grab that coffee cup, fill it up, bring it over, and sit on down and take a swig for a mobile cup of Joe. Alright. Before we get too far into this video review, I'd like to give a huge thank you and shout out to our friends over at LG for hooking us up with the LG Optimus G and other LG products. That's because of companies like LG that make Mobile Cup of Joe possible by sending us their products to unbox and review for you guys, our fans. So big thank you to LG for the Optimus G and let's get started with this review. So first I'm going to talk about some quick little design and build quality aspects of the Optimus G. We'll start that off by taking a quick tour around the phone. So on the front of the device, we have our 4.7 inch True HD IPS display. Top of the phone, we have an LG logo, a notification light, and our 1.3 megapixel front facing camera, and Joe's beautiful face. On the uh, bottom of the device, we have got our uh, micro USB syncing slash charging port, uh, two screws to take off the back of the phone, and one of our two microphone pinholes. Below the screen, we have three Android capacitive touch buttons, a back button, a home button, and a menu button. Notice though, we are missing a, a recent application button, recent applications button. We'll get into that in a bit when we talk about the software though of the device. On the top, we have got on the left our one of our second uh, microphone pinholes and our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On the back of the device, I no, it looks awfully uh, dirty. I just cleaned this right before I filmed this, but this thing does attract a ton of fingerprints in a matter of seconds, really. But here we have our 13 megapixel rear-facing camera and LED flash and LG logo. And the back is glass as well, and it's got this neat little uh, effect where based on the light, that's based on the way the light is hitting the back of the phone and the way you look at it, uh, should display a different design every time. So now that's the design, let's talk about the build quality. So the screen, like I said, is 4.7 inches and is also made of cornering Gorilla Glass 2, which is a very durable and sturdy uh, glass. At CES this year, if you recall, Gorilla Glass actually announced a cornering Gorilla Glass 3, which can withstand over 100 pounds of pressure and not scratch or crack or really anything. Gorilla Glass 2, though, is still uh, the latest version of Gorilla Glass that is currently available on products on, that are on the market for consumers, but is still an extremely durable uh, glass. I have not had any issues with the build quality of the front of the, the front glass anyways. It's very durable. You're not going to get any scratches on it unless you actually uh, try to purposely scratch it or drop it. But for day-to-day -day use, a Gorilla Glass really does hold up nicely. Now, one thing on the back of the phone, which isn't really a con, but more of a minor annoyance, is the glass display. Oh, while I do like it, and while it's more sturdy than I would have thought, having glass on the back of the phone, oh, uh, you can see that it attracts fingerprints like crazy. I swear, I cleaned this right before we started filming, and uh, two minutes and 55 seconds into the video review, and it's already fingerprinted up like crazy. Uh, so it's a bit of an issue I had with it. Uh, also forgot to mention your little speaker for the Optimus G is right there on the back as well. But so build quality, it's a very, very sturdy device and it feels extremely great in the hand. It only weighs 4.19 ounces, so it's not a uh, heavy smartphone at all. It's very light, it's got enough weight to it, so you're not gonna forget that it's in your hand, but it doesn't weigh too much to the point where it's gonna weigh you down. So build quality is really fantastic. Like I said, I like the glass on the back, but it just that picks up fingerprints like crazy. So if you're a neat freak on having a, a very fingerprint-free phone on the Optimus, Optimus G, it's not going to be for you. But all joking aside, the build quality really is pretty fantastic. So moving on to some quick hardware specifications of the LG Optimus G. So we'll turn our brightness up there real quick so you can actually see what's going on on the phone. We'll take it off of our 30 to brightness if I can find the brightness that's recording live for you you never know what's gonna happen but there we go got our brightness turned up and for hardware uh, we're actually gonna t do something that we've never done on the mobile cup of Joe video review before 
we're going to want to run a quadrant uh, benchmark test. So if I can find it really quick, we're using quadrant standard and we're going to run the full benchmark test. So while that's doing that, I'll brief you up on what this thing's got under the hood. Uh, under the hood of the Optimus G, you've got a 1.5 gigahertz quad core Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro processor and two gigabytes of RAM. So as you can see right there, we'll try to zoom in a little bit for you so you can see uh, how the Quadrant uh, benchmark is looking on it. Uh, you can see it runs very smooth. And you can see it uh, just in the light of it. The light of it, the light of it, and your voice cracking is all included with Quadrant. So you can see we got a steady. I can zoom in right there. A steady 59, 60 frames per second. A uh, very capable processing chip in here. Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro is really one of the fastest uh, processing chips on the market right now. So our benchmark is complete. We're going to just finalize it right now. And while it loads up, you can see that we got a pretty impressive scores. Uh, completely sourced past the Transformer Prime Infinity, uh, the HTC One X, uh, Motorola Atrix 4G, and all these other uh, new smartphones and tablets. So you can see that Qualcomm's quad-core processor really does power this baby through anything you throw at it. Uh, just so you can see how it handles in gaming performance, let's load up Fruit Ninja, just for funsies, and so you can see how an actual game runs and not just a, a benchmark test. So turn our volume down and we will launch a game. Let's just do some arcade mode. I'm gonna turn the volume up a little bit. So you can see that everything is running very smooth. This is actually one of the smoothest, smoothest experiences I've ever had uh, with Fruit Ninja, and I've played Fruit Ninja on many, many devices. I've actually played Fruit Ninja before on a 20-inch monitor. Uh, as you can tell, I'm a Fruit Ninja addict, uh, but it really does run extremely smooth on this device. Oh, while Fruit Ninja may not be the most graphically intense game, the still, there's no hiccups whatsoever. Even some smartphones with dual-core processors uh, can hiccup on Fruit Ninja just because there's a lot going on on the screen at the same time. But as you can see, we got a very smooth experience here and no problems whatsoever. So big kudos uh, to the processing and those two gigabytes of RAM really help this thing uh, process through anything you may throw at it. Now this thing also has a 1.3 megapixel front-facing camera and a 13 megapixel rear-facing camera with LED flash on the back. Now this is where I do need to point out that this is the Sprint version of the phone. Uh, the Sprint model has a 13 megapixel rear-facing camera, whereas the AT&T model has an 8 megapixel rear-facing camera. We obviously have the Sprint model with a 13 megapixel rear-facing camera. And let's bring up my gallery just so I can show you a couple sample photos that I took with it. Oh, these photos will look better on our website, on our written review at www.mobilecupofjoe.com. I'll put a link in the description below oh, that goes directly to our written review. But here's a camera that I, or not a camera, a picture that I took with the rear-facing camera. You can zoom in. You can see that the quality is actually very fantastic. Uh, this was taken from a good distance away, but everything looks extremely great. I'll zoom out all the way so you can see just exactly how far away I was. You can zoom in so much and still get great detail uh, on your pictures right there. We've got another one that is a good example of the uh, quality on here. So there's the little cat Sarah. You may have seen her on his show previously. But you can zoom in and you can see the individual whiskers, the individual's hair, individual hairs on this cat, and the detail in the curtains as well. Uh, it's a very accurate camera. Actually one of the most accurate cameras I've ever tested to date. Uh, granted, I have not reviewed the most products of, on Mobile Cup of Joe, but it is an absolutely fantastic camera, and it really can overcome your point-and-shoot camera. 13 megapixels is an uh, very, very high uh, resolution for cameras, and the rear facing can also capture a full HD 1080p video. So if you need a smartphone and you really want to have a good camera and video recorder, uh, rest assured the LG Optimus G will perform uh, probably beyond your expectations in terms of video and picture quality. Now in terms of call quality, uh, the LG Optimus G is actually pretty great too. So if you can see, uh, right now our service is a bit low. We got 3G with one little teeny tiny of a bar. Uh, the LG Optimus G is LTE capable, but because of the area that I live in, as I've mentioned probably in all my video reviews of smartphones, uh, I live in Lawrence, Michigan, which is an extremely, extremely rural area. I cannot stress how rural we are. We have one stoplight, so chances are uh, the service that we get with these phones is not going to be the best. Uh, AT&T is probably the best service we have. 
AT or Sprint and T-Mobile is the worst. Uh, when we did get good service on the phone, though, when we went to a couple different locations and tested out the service there, uh, the call quality was actually very great. I could hear everyone like perfectly, and they could hear me great as well. And when we two different locations, we could not actually test out the LTE speeds. We only got 3G speeds everywhere we went uh, because I cannot travel to a lot of different locations. I can only get to a couple different cities to test our phones out. But from where we went, we were always only getting 3G services. But from what we tested, we were able to still get some pretty decent data speeds considering it was 3G. Uh, keep in mind, though, even though we're getting 3G, though, I just want to keep stressing that this is an LTE-capable device. We just weren't able to test out the LTE uh, capabilities of it because of our area but when we did get good service the call quality was fantastic and uh, again rest assured the call quality you will not be disappointed with it at all because it's a very strong performer in terms of just a basic phone so under the hood of the lg optimus g in terms of battery we have a 2100 milliamp hour battery which we actually surprisingly got around 11 hours of use and that's with web browsing streaming some video playing fruit ninja and temple run 2 we still got about 11 hours of use. Uh, granted, we had our brightness turned down pretty low, and we are only running 3G speed, so if your brightness is up higher and you do have LTE connected constantly, it may be a bit lower for you. But from what we reviewed, 11 hours is pretty fantastic, especially for a smartphone with a large display like this and LTE capabilities, even though we weren't uh, running LTE on the phone. So 11 hours is very, very impressive. Uh, I was actually really pleased with that when I was uh, reading some reviews of the LG Optimus G before we got this in uh, to review it, I was a bit concerned because a lot of them said that they were a little disappointed with the battery life, but overall I could not find anything to complain about with uh, how long it could last you. I actually got through two entire days uh, with the Optimus G without having to charge it, so that alone uh, should say something about its incredible battery performance. Now the LG Optimus G has a 4.7 inch screen that is a true HD IPS display with 1280 by 760 pixels, that's 1280 by 768 pixels with 318 ppi or pixels per inch. So as you can see uh, from the picture test and really just from the colors and the text of the foam, that is extremely vibrant and gorgeous. Uh, this is one of the best looking smartphone screens I've ever seen. Uh, even though it's at 1080p HD, everything looks very beautiful and quite fantastic actually. I'm not disappointed with it whatsoever. LG Optimus G has one of the best screens or best looking screens uh, we've ever seen here on Mobile Cup of Joe. Uh, the detail and everything is just fantastic. You have to see this thing in person for yourself. Uh, while the quality and the resolution of it uh, doesn't sound like something anything special, it just sounds like something uh, you see on most smartphones nowadays, it uh, really does look very beautiful. The colors are nicely saturated, the text is extremely crisp, and everything just looks beautiful all around. So next in the review, we're going to talk about some software specifications. So the LG Optimus G is running Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich with LG's Optimus 3.0 user interface layered over it. One of the things I mentioned in the video in this review earlier when we we're talking about the design and build quality aspects of the Optimus G was that there was no recent applications button. Uh, recent apps were introduced with 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich where you can bring up your recent applications. There's usually a passive touch button for it on Android phones, but on this we just have a back button, a home button, and a recent applications button. To access your recent apps, simply hold down on your home button and it'll bring up all your recent applications and you can still access it like normal. I'll swipe these out or launch them from here. It still works just fine. Just keep in mind you'll have to hold down your home button to access that. Also, with uh, all of LG's latest phones running the Optimus 3.0 user interface, you have got Quick Memo on here, which is LG's uh, note-taking function. You can go to your notebook and you can start a new note and really just type up or write up anything that you want to. Uh, it's a great note-taking feature if you like taking notes on your smartphone. I personally uh, favor of note-taking features such as Evernote just simply because it's cloud-based. I know my handwriting looks terrible, but I have fat fingers that I'm writing with on a 4.7 inch screen through a camera lens, so it's a bit difficult, but uh, it's a nice note-taking feature if you like having local notes on your phone and being able to actually do some actual handwriting. Uh, this can be a lot more useful if you have a stylus, but it's a nice little inclusion that LG includes with their phone. Now, the Optimus 3.0 user interface also adds for a lot of cool customization options. Uh, you can change your theme of your phone right now instead of Optimus, but you can change it to a BizFees Cozy Wall Marshmallow. Uh, you can change the icons right here. You can see that if we hold down our Chrome icon, 
and we tap on it, we can actually change the icon for it. So let's say I want it to be, uh, I don't know, let's say I choose the game controller for some reason. Now you can see that my Chrome icon is a little game controller. So cool little things like that really allow for a ton of customization with the Optimus 3.0 user interface. A few other cool things, you can change your effect when you're swiping through your home screens. So let's say that I choose a carousel. And we back out of that. And now when I swipe through my home screens, I get a nice little carousel effect. Oh, really cool things that are very awesome with the Optimus G. Oh, another customization thing that I want to point out. Uh, I don't know if this is exclusive to the Optimus G or not. I just I did not find this when I was reviewing the LG Intuition. But if you go to your home screen settings on the Optimus G, you see the setting here that says Portrait View Only. If you uncheck that next time you go to your home screen, if you turn it horizontally, actually transitions into a horizontal effect. I've never seen this on a stock or a user interface on an Android phone. Uh, there are a lot of custom launchers that you can do and use this, but I've never seen this uh, feature right out of the box. So this is really cool. I know that a lot of you uh, don't see a point in having your smartphone in a horizontal view, but it's a really cool feature to have. Like I said, never seen this on a phone before. I'm not sure if this is exclusive to the Optimus G or not, but either way, it's a very cool feature to have, and I love so much how LG really allows you to customize their phones. You can also customize the lock screen effect on your phone. If you go to your settings again and you go to lock screen settings, uh, you can go to scre screen effect and let's choose uh, spreading ink. So now when we lock our phone, we get a cool little effect there. We can change it back to do drop, which is the one that comes us when you get the phone. It was one of my favorites. Let me unlock it we get this nice dew drop effect. So it's little things like that that really make the Op Optimus 3.0 user interface a great uh, add-on to the Android experience. I know there are a lot of you that prefer a stock vanilla, vanilla taste of Android, but I personally like vanilla better, but the Optimus 3.0 user interface is one of the better manufacturer skins for Android. Looks a lot like Samsung's TouchWiz user interface, especially with the way that the app drawer is presented. It's got a cartoony look and feel like uh, the Samsung TouchWiz user interface has as well. But overall, a very nice skin for Android. Uh, Optim uh, Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich, although it is outdated, uh, LG did confirm the Optimus G will be receiving an update to Android 4.1 Jelly Bean uh, within the coming months, I believe, in the United States. They're starting to release it in other countries right now, but this should be coming to the Optimus G in the United States anyways, the update to Android 4.1 Jelly Bean within the coming months. So that brings us to my final verdict of the device. So the LG Optimus G is a fantastic device. It's actually one of the best Android handsets you can currently get on the market. Really, as you, if you can tell from the review, I have no big complaints about the LG Optimus G. You can pick this thing up on Sprint or AT&T. I recommend the Sprint version, though, because you're getting that 13 megapixel rear-facing camera. And I gotta give this, guys, a 10 out of 10. I really didn't have any big issues with it. The only one that I can think off at the top of my head and after my two weeks of using the device is the back material being a fingerprint hog. Aside from that though, there's really no negative side effects of the Optimus G. Getting crazy good processing speeds, quad core 1.5 gigahertz, 2 gigs of RAM, a true HD IPS 1280 by 768 IPS display with cornering Gorilla Glass Excellent call quality, especially when you have good reception. You're getting Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich. Even though it's outdated, LG's Optimus 3.0 user interface really save it and redeem it. And especially with the confirmation for 4.1 Jelly Bean, oh, this device is really one of the best Android handsets I've ever used. Even though Jelly Bean is not present on it at the time, on the Optimus G, I really did not miss it. Just because the processing speeds, uh, you'll think that you have Project Butter on here just because of how fast the device is. Granted, you're not getting Google now that you get on a lot of new Android smartphones that have Jelly Bean, but this is a fantastic device, easily the best smartphone LG has ever crafted, and I'm 10 out of 10. I know that it, you may think that I'm favoring this a lot because I get these devices for free, but this is my honest opinion. I think this handset is a fantastic choice for anyone looking to get a new smartphone. If you're looking to get a new Android phone and you want one right now, this is a no-brainer. Go for the LG Optimus G. 
But there you go, my full video review of the LG Optimus G. What do you think of it? Uh, do you have the LG Optimus G? Are you planning to get one? Comment below and let us know in the description below, or in the comments below the description, actually, what you think of the phone. Uh, if you're interested at all in purchasing the LG Optimus G on Ting service, which is a prepaid cell phone plan where you pay for what you want to use, that's what I use for my personal cell phone, there's a link in the description below for a $25 credit off the LG Optimus G through Ting's service. Ting uses Sprint's towers, uh, it's just on a different uh, service plan where it's much cheaper than a lot of these contracts. So if you're interested in purchasing the LG Optimus G, link in the description below to purchase it on Ting. You get a $25 credit. Anytime you purchase a device with, through the link, you help support Mobile Cup of Joe. You can use the link anyways and purchase another phone on Ting. Doesn't necessarily have to be the LG Optimus G. It can be any phone on there. Link in the description below. Use it. Get a $25 credit and help support Mobile Cup of Joe. Well, you guys all know, uh, go ahead, hit the like button if you liked it. It takes one second to do so. It really helps support the show. And if you want to sh show your support towards the show even more, why don't you go ahead, hit the subscribe button at the top of your screen or bottom of the screen, however YouTube has it laid out, uh, for more Mobile Cup of Joe videos. And you guys all know, we are on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And don't forget to check out our brand new redesigned website at www.mobilecupofjoe.com for your latest in mobile tech news outside of our videos. I'm Joe Martin from mobilecupofjoe.com. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.